Greetings, ladies and men of Jensen. Welcome to the latest narration of the web series, The Princess and the Human. If you are new to the series, there is a playlist listed down below in the description. And as always, I hope that you enjoy. Chapter 35. Expertise. Now would definitely be all from my part, unless you have anything to add, Lady Gathay. Gathay suppressed a sigh as the two of them kept walking through the hallways. Lord Jarkin, I am by no means here to undermine your authority, she insisted to the head physician of the Kalhaha Hospital. Her Highness simply wishes that the transport for her brother happens without any trouble. I am more than sufficient to ensure that, the head physician retorted. Then feel free to inform her of that. I am simply following her orders, or do you want me to ignore them? Yeah, of course not. I'm just saying that sending two doctors of her, at least comparable qualifications, is excessive. Gathay once again didn't let her feelings show. She knew Dr. Kajarkina was fully aware that her qualifications were more than just comparable. But as the royal physician, she technically outranked him despite her being only a baroness. Most nobles, especially those from all the clans, usually didn't like that. Granted, she didn't know for sure if that was really ticked him off. She might have told him otherwise, but the fact that she was here insinuated that her highness didn't fully trust his abilities. Maybe she should have answered in a less confrontational manner. I agree, it is a bit much, she said, trying to mitigate a bit. But please don't understand this as her mistrusting you. She's simply worried about her brother. I'd wish that she would treat her own health in the same level of care. But as long as I'm her subordinate, all I can do is give her my advice. If she insists on not following it, there is nothing I can do. And to be completely honest, she is un under a lot of stress lately, so don't hold it against her. A sigh from Jokaina was the answer. No, I guess you're right. Besides, it might not be an excessive after all. Since we are approaching the long rain, the weather is a bit unstable. The shuttle will be forced to fly slower, so in the worst case, it might take us an entire day to reach Viren Manar. We can take turns in monitoring his condition. No good idea. Oh, first ones. Get a room, you two. The sudden call from the sickbed reminded the two of them that they weren't alone. They had been walking alongside the assistants, who were currently in the process of transporting the young prince to the landing platform. Apparently, at this discussion had grown a bit heated. Both of them had forgotten their surroundings. I apologize, Your Highness, Jarkina said with a bow. The behavior I displayed was highly unprofessional. Likewise, Githay added. I'm not familiar with the phrase you used, though I assume it's from Nadine. But maybe, figured, Githay chuckled. Maybe she should one day ask the small alien what some of her more curious idioms meant. Say, Your Highness, you wouldn't happen to know what the request to get a room is supposed to convey. I, uh, no. Nadine said she'd explain when I'm older. When he was older? Why would one's age be a relevant factor in that? Well, that was a topic for a different day. For now, they had reached the ambulance shuttle, while the assistants carried the injured prince inside. Cathay and Jarkina did one final check to ensure that they had everything they might end up needing. Kaiten's injuries were almost entirely external, so they thankfully didn't need many monitoring devices. The most important things were bandages, hardening agents, and Larco resin, in case of a new tear opened in his shell. I guess the silver lining is that he only touched Nadine with his front side. Thanks to that, he can at least be more or less lie on his back. Let's hope that he doesn't get caught in a storm. There shouldn't be one according to the forecast, but flying to the other side of the planet was a long journey. The flight was mostly uneventful, up until around ten invers after the start. Kaiten had fallen asleep a while ago, when the data pad of the head physician gave off the message shout. Something important? Githay asked, more for the sake of small talk than actual interest. Lab report, a colleague murmured. Her Highness managed to acquire a sample of the unknown substance that had put the prince in this situation. Ah, right, that story, Githay thought, though I wasn't aware that she sent in a sample of Nadine's sweat. Well, I wanted to do a thorough analysis myself, so I won't complain. Could you send me the report later? Sure. Okay, let's see. Water-based solution containing traces of ammonia, potassium, sodium chloride, something that is unknown but potentially toxic, and a variety of salts. What in the world is this concoction? Cathay did her best not to chuckle at that remark. What would a conic say if he knew the true origin of this? Just what were they trying to achieve with this? He mumbled as he kept reading. Or was it maybe a byproduct? But even then, what was the... What by the first ones? The sudden outcry made Gusei perk up. That reaction after already going through the previous contents. Was there something Nadine hadn't told her? What does it say? She carefully asked. 
The solution contains an insane variety of microbes, all of them unknown, plethora of bacteria, viruses, and something uncategorized. Pathogenic, Gathay questioned, shocked by what she had just heard. It wasn't that rare for a species had one or two types of symbiotic microbes in their body. But this amount, and what was the undefinable thing? I, uh, probably not. I mean, his highness is fine, right? I would definitely give this to the Viamur Hospital, but we examined his highness often and thoroughly. We would have noticed if there had been shown any symptoms. That was true. Maybe it didn't affect them because they were used to Nadine's organism, which was so fundamentally different from Veneri. Still, she needed to look into this just to be sure. Viral infections usually were not an issue between species of different planets, as their organisms were too different, but on very rare occasions, they were similar enough for a mutation to allow the jump. She needed to make sure that that wasn't the case between veneering and human when she came back. Bacteria were a lot trickier, but as a colleague had said, the prince seemed fine for now. They reached the capital's planet, the great city of Viamanar, after a bit under a day. Sleeping in the shuttle had exactly offered the most satisfying rest, but the princess's well-being was more important at the moment. After Kyaton had successfully reached his new hospital room, Jock Kaina announced that he would stay for a few days to make sure everything went over smoothly. Gethe, on the other hand, went back immediately to not be absent from the palace for too long. The ride home was expected to go faster because there was no need to fly as careful as before. Despite being tired, Gethe did her best to stay away so she wouldn't mess up her sleep cycle too badly. But apparently, she had dozed off for a moment as the pilot's voice tore her out of a stupor. Milady? No. What? That is now the 17th Inver of Kalhanar. You wanted me to tell you. Oh, yes, thank you. If they went by schedule, which was to be expected, the negotiation should have a break right now. As Cathay issued a call to the Star Palace, the servant in charge informed her that her highness was indeed free at the moment, and after a short waiting period, the princess's face appeared on the screen. Doctor, she greeted, is there an issue? Not so far, your highness. I merely wanted to inform you that your brother's transport went over without any problems. That's good to hear. Do you know when you'll return? Probably not until tonight. You'll likely be already in bed by then, but uh, I also called for another reason. How are your headaches? With a worried expression, the princess took a long pause before answering. In all honesty, it's been getting worse. During yesterday's negotiations, I did, uh, did exactly what I wanted to prevent from happening. And I don't feel like the medicine is working. No effect. Sure, she had given the princess weaker version of the medicine, but there still should have been a noticeable improvement. Maybe the headaches weren't from the stress. But what then? Headaches were unfortunately a symptom that could have a plethora of causes. Did you notice anything else? I, uh, don't think so. That wasn't helpful. Can you cancel the talks for the rest of the day? Actually, today there aren't any. Lady Keikler proposed the day off so that I could rest. Cathay needed a moment to process just what she heard. The Tystree Ambassador? Yes. Your condition is so bad that even the Tystree Ambassador proposed a break. Yes. Then I hope you are taking it. Treat yourself with care. If it gets worse, don't hesitate to call for another doctor. I don't know how long exactly the rest of the flight will take. But if you're still awake when I come back, I will take a closer look. If not, come to me first thing in the morning. The sun had long disappeared when Gathay finally reached the Star Palace. Tired from the long flight, she entered through the side entrance and made her way to the west wing. While the lights in the corridor were still on, not a single servant was in sight around the princess's room. This could only mean her highness had already got to sleep. There was also no one waiting for her. Relieved that the least hadn't gotten worse, and glad that the princess had gone to bed early for once, Cathay entered her office, and through her private chambers, her tiredness won as soon as she lay down and fell asleep. She didn't know how long she'd been sleeping. All she knew was that a loud, obnoxious beeping noise made her wake up. Why was her alarm clock going off? It was still in the middle of the night. No, this wasn't her alarm. This was the emergency alert. Great. So it wasn't enough for Prince Kyaton to annoy her during the day. Now he had to go rob her of a night's rest. And the worst part? To make sure that she wouldn't miss it, she had made it so the alarm wouldn't stop on its own. She actually had to get up and open the door to turn it off. Wait, Kyaton was at the hospital. In an instant, she was fully awake and practically jumped out of bed. Whoever this was, if they pressed the emergency button in the middle of the night, it was important. She was just about to leave her bedroom when suddenly she froze upon hearing some sort of impact, so violent that it made the floor vibrate. What by the first ones was that? A second impact made her overcome the moment of shock, 
She ran through the small living room, but her left foot got caught on the doorstep. She stumbled into her office and fell to the ground, which was likely cushioned by the soft carpet. Just as she pulled her head up and looked towards the entrance, the third impact hit. With the sound of metal wailing its duty, the lock got ripped out of the doorframe and the door burst open, crashing into the adjacent wall with so much force that the upper hinge broke apart. In the corridor there stood Nadine, one foot raised. Had she seriously just kicked the door open? But before Cathay could voice her bafflement, she noticed the princess's unconscious body draped over the small alien's shoulder. End of chapter. I'd quickly like to thank the T5 peeps. Cold War Boomerwaffen, Severin Cerberus, Bushmaster 177, Henry the Red, Caspar Arnholtz, Cold War Boomerwaffen, Elijah Silvercross, Dragzoon WRE, and Severin Cerberus. Thank you very much.